I'm here with Christopher Okravi. Christopher, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, so I'm from Sweden, a um, small town called Uppsala, Uppsala University. Uh, I'm a PhD student. This is actually my first conference that I'm attending. Uh, I'm here with my colleague Carl, and we have a paper that we're presenting on uh, essentially. This the is Carl? This is Carl. Hey, Carl, come on, get into the picture so we, at least we know who you are. There you go. Hello. That's Carl. <laughs> hey, Carl, tell us a little, something about yourself a little bit. Uh, yes, I'm also a PhD student at Uppsala University. Uh, in uh, management and innovation studies, so this is not really my field. So, a lot of. So that's the reason that you're leaving Christopher to just answer yeah. the questions. Yeah. <laughs> so Smart side. He's, that's, he's that's the management side. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. What's your area of interest? Um, so about fields. I mean, I'm from information systems, but the paper we're here presenting is about uh, policy interventions for new antibiotics or for creating new antibiotics. So new what? We're Antibiotics. Okay. So we're growing resistant to the antibiotics that we have, and we're not developing new antibiotics quickly enough right, to mm. offset the fact that we're growing resistant to, to the ones we have. Um, so what we're looking at is essentially an innovation. We're saying if governments, for example, are about to spend money to uh, fund uh, antibiotics research, where and under what conditions, under what circumstances should that money be uh, spent? Where should we funnel the money? Does it make sense to push it early? Does it make, make sense to push it later? What, what kind of amounts of money? Are we talking money? Or are we talking different kinds of support? And so that's the reason we're using simulation. Right? We're trying to use simulation to quantify. I mean, this is a massive debate and people have a lot, lots of opinions. Uh, but it's, we're trying to bring some level of evidence. I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's difficult to, for example, verify or uh, validate the, the models that we're building um, but but really it's, it's it's some evidence we're kind of in the position where we have to say do we do we want to use some data or do we want to base decisions decisions on no data so so when you talk about with. no data how did you go about working a simulation with no data <laughs> so I mean, uh, of course there, there is data I'm, I'm I'm exaggerating but concretely the work we've uh, presented here uh, is about mapping the antibiotics that are currently in development uh, and then looking at what the characteristics of those are and then looking at other data set to say that uh, antibiotics that target these indications usually have uh, such and such costs, such and such risks, such and such uh, development times, so, etc. And then we uh, augment uh, those properties by uh, proxying a policy intervention. Right? So, so we change some piece of uh, of the properties of that antibiotic. And then we recalculate, we were very uh, focused on something called ENPV, so a, a financial valuation metric. So, so we change the financial valuation of a particular antibiotic, and then we say, okay, with the policy intervention, with this, uh, the way we've proxied the policy intervention, what's the value of the antibiotic economically for a private actor, uh, and versus uh, before we had that policy intervention. So then we can measure the delta, we can talk about, okay, before the policy intervention, we had uh, such and such many terminations of antibiotic due to them having poor financial prospects. And after the policy intervention, we uh, hopefully lessened the number of terminations. Well, that's cool. Tell me about the life of a PhD student in Sweden. <laughs> I'm um, sure that you have heard about a whole bunch of horror stories about the PhD life of a student in the US. How about the student in Sweden? I, ha I have not, but... You have not? I've you have to go. There are plenty of evidence and there is plenty <laughs> of stories. So I'm just going to point you to some of those that are online, yeah. publicly available. So tell us about the lab of a PhD student in Sweden. No, it's, I mean, it's fantastic. I, I guess the main difference is that a PhD student in Sweden is actually paid because you're, in, you're employed as a, uh, under the state. Right? You're a government employee, I guess. Um, and I guess much as here, like it's very different depending on what institution you're in. Right? But of course, as always with PhD, it's very free. Right? Like you you're pursuing something that you're very interested and passionate about, and you try to solve a, a real problem. I, uh, to me, for example, one thing that's very important is that we're looking at a problem that I find is actually very important. I mean, many problems are very important, but I feel this is a, a chance of actually spending intellectual time on something and hopefully having some kind of small impact, making <laughs> some kind of actual difference. And, People are different, but I guess to me that actually matters. Right? At least you've tried. Yeah, right. 
What do you think your advisor hates you? Sorry, Leo. What do you think your advisor hates you? Hates about you? No, what, what, what does he hate you? What do you think he <laughs> hates you? You told me about that the other day, so. Yeah. Um, you don't think he hates you? No, of course. It's, it's always tricky to have a PhD student, I assume. And but you hate your advisor. Come on, this is. He's on camera. <laughs> so. No, no, no. But, but, Not yet. But, but I guess what's tricky, I mean, uh, again, what's always tricky about a, a, a PhD, I, I assume, is the fact that it's very free, right? So, so there's this constant search for structure. Right? And. Uh, being the one who's actually pursuing the PhD, you might seek a little bit more structure than your supervisor would actually think that you've earned or should have, right? Because it's good for your actual for your development to not have that structure. You're going to be a great politician. Uh, that, is a, that, is a, that is a fantastic answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you a dog person, cat person, or robot person? I have two cats. You have two cats. Definitely a cat person. Yeah. But robots are fantastic. Do you like, have one? And well, I have a vacuum robot, automatic vacuum robot. That counts. That counts. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.